Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I've got a game I was sent by the Blue Zerg player in the lower right. It's from Heart of the Swarm Beta and it is from the amazing Famuk who was kind enough to say this game was awesome Maddles, if you'd like to give it a cast, here you go. So big thanks to him, I'm sure it is going to be an awesome game. His opponent in the top left is the Red Terran, it is single, so it's going to be a ZVT. Are we going to be seeing some cool Widow Mines? Are we going to be seeing Mass Swarm Host? Are we going to be seeing all sorts of other things? Maybe some Viper play. Vipers are the one thing I really want to be casting more of, so I'm really hoping we get to see those. Ultras, they're a possibility if it gets into the late game. Who knows? What we know for now, though, is that it looks like it's going to be a wall off. So that straight away poses some things like, oh, a wall off, okay then. It's not going to be a command center first, most likely. Though it could still be. You could chuck down that command center first in part of the wall off. It's something that has become a bit of a quirky style of play from some Terran players. For Mook, though, he is just sitting back here and is just like, yeah. I'm going to go for my 15 hatch, my 16 pool most likely, because that is the standard meta game in both Heart of the Swarm and Wings of Liberty against Terran. Single getting up that barracks and is really not getting up any gas, so things looking fairly standard for both of these two players at the moment. Now, let me just remind everyone that if you do enjoy my cast, make sure you like the video, make sure you leave a cool comment, and make sure you do subscribe. Let me know what you think of my new timer cover here. Do you like this? I think it's pretty fancy. So, yeah, if you like that, let me know. And all in all, make sure that you check back daily for new casts, because I get a new cast up every day of the week, which is awesome. So, I am just taking a look at what's coming down. Obviously the Overlord being forced to be here because with Reapers no longer requiring a tech lab, it can it's getting a very common build to go in with a Reaper and a Bunker, in which case you need to know when that's coming down, so I think that's a safe thing to do. Also this is on the latest balance change, so Burrow is on Hatchery Tech. You don't need a Lair to get Burrow. That adds in some really exciting play you can go for, potentially with say, just leaving a few Burrow Banelings down here, and then your opponent moving out and then kaboom! Everything's dead. Single though, going for a one rack to command center, there we go. So everything looking A-OK -okay there. No gas for either player yet. So we're not going to be seeing any of the new Heart of the Swarm beta unit quite yet. Hopefully we will shortly. Looking forward to seeing that. Now, I am just taking a quick look at everything that could be coming down, obviously. There's so many options now. Heart of the Swarm is so much more aggressive, and that's something that I really love about it. The, it rewards players for more harassment, there's more options for cool little bits of harassment, there's more play styles, because in the Wings of Liberty everything's been so thoroughly worked out, there's some set things you just do. And it's quite easy to predict, uh, can't speak that, it's quite easy to predict what could be coming, and therefore, you're just saying that, and it's a bit... It's a bit predictable, but with Heart of the Swarm, so many things can be viable that it just makes it so exciting to watch, in my opinion. But as we can see, still following standard Wings of Liberty sort of style meta, one Rax, Command Center, double gas, will probably be a factory following up. So that opens up the options of either A, getting out Widow Mines, or B, going for Hellions, both really viable. For Moot, hasn't got any gas yet, so probably going to go for quite a quick third base. And of course, Single has scouted all of that out. He's come in, he's seen pretty much everything that he needs to, knows there's no gas, and knows it's likely to be a third. So will we be seeing a third down here, or will we see the third taken up the top? Both are viable to go down. It's just... It depends how you want to play it, because if you take this third, which for is going to, you have to defend a wider space, and if units do get in here, it can be a little bit awkward to defend it, but as long as you defend it up here, it's such a wide open area that Zerg players are able to get a good surround on units, and Speedlings are able to work very effectively. Meanwhile, though, if we come up here for single, he's getting up his factory, he's getting up the reactor, so everything there is really looking standard at the moment. This is quite standard, it's quite an early third base, but if you know your opponent went for a one rack command center build, you know you're going to be able to get that down, and you know you need to get that down in order to stay in the game economically. Now, one thing I forgot to actually mention is, Vermut is a high masters player, so therefore he is very, this is a good quality game, it's not like it's some bronze league or something and we're looking for faults in the play, this is really tip top games and therefore shouldn't see very many mistakes at all. Now, looking up here, there's apparently a quick pause there, and the transition into Hellions is going down. We've also got the Starport and Reactor, so it looks like Single is not wanting to go out of his comfort zone. He's just like, hey, 
I'm going to stick with Reactor Hellions into Banshee because that's what I know and it works. So I'm just going to stick with that okay, guys. And yeah, that's okay, single. Don't try and push out the boat or test out new things. Just go for what you think will work. And for Moon at the moment, he's going for the standard what he thinks will work, which is double upgrades. He's getting the missile attack upgrades as well and the Roach one. So he could be seeing Roach Hydra, which is really strong. This is also good if you want to go into Swarm Hosts. And the one criticism Swarm Hosts have is that they're great when you get a lot of them. Until you get a lot of them out, though, they can be a little bit weak. So... To be honest, Banshees with Cloak are just as good as they were in Wings of Liberty. There's no additional ways for Zerg players to deal with those yet. The creep spread from Vermin really going nicely. I'm a big fan of getting two queens out just to spread creep against Terran. They're still terrified of engaging on creeps, so you might as well just keep pushing it out, keep going. Hydras, of course, if you do go Roach Hydra, are still quicker on creep even after the speed upgrade, so still worthwhile spreading it down. We've got the Roaches. Just taking a little bit, uh, these roaches, these hellions rather, just taking a little bit of damage from the queens. The creep spread still going nicely. We've got the first roaches now hitting the field. Lair also about two thirds done, so that's when we'll really see the tech choice from Vermouth this game. In terms of scouting information, he hasn't seen too much. I don't know if he knows that this is coming down or whether he's, when he's going to come and check if that's going down. The Overlord is, of course, on its way. We've got the first Banshee out. The second Banshee should be in production. There we go. But a small supply block here for single ears build. Just going to end that though now, so that's not too bad. Meanwhile, Hellions have made it into the third base of the moon. He's going to lose a couple of drones, but of course the roaches coming in here should be able to clean this up too. Maybe even three Hellions will go down just managing to sneak them away but for me with those roaches out is going to be fine he's also got his lair up now he's also got up four and now his fifth gas on its way so we should see some commitment to tech soon that cloak banshee is doing some nice damage going to be able to pick, pick off that queen very nicely and of course this is where overseers have to start morphing and you have to start getting ready to deal with this there's the hydrogen so roach hydra which is saying that i thought was very likely to be coming out will indeed be the case the one one missile attack upgrades are done that means these roaches and Hydras are going to be even stronger. Two Hellions have managed to make it into the main base, but the Queen is going to knock down one of them, and of course only one Hellion will take quite a long time to deal that damage. The single Banshee on its way out. There should be a second Banshee somewhere on the field. Here it is, it's on its way across. So that when it joins in will make it a little bit more difficult to engage, but still for Mook, doing great with a good number of Queens out. He's pushed all of this back. He hasn't taken too much damage. 15 workers is quite annoying, but... To be honest, he's still ahead in the work account, and his opponent hasn't really transitioned out of this harassment style play. He's just been harassing to secure a quick third. So all Fermud needs to do now is make sure he gets up his fourth base or deals some good damage. But with the Hydras on their way, Hellion Banshee harassment is getting shut down hard. Fermud also going for the muscular augment, which basically means that if you get that as opposed to range, it is more aggressive because if you get range first, you're trying to be more defensive. You're going to be staying on creep and you want to be able to pick off air harassment. If you're getting down the speed upgrade, it says that, hey, I am definitely going to try and kill you. Two Hellions get taken down there. Two manage to make it into the main, but with the Roaches there, with the Queen there, that is going to get shut down, of course. The Hydras are now definitely revealed. You can see that something's being upgraded from the Hydra Den, which is useful, but... To be honest, it's to be expected. You're going to be seeing some kind of upgrade. Vermoon is now getting up his infestation pit as well. This Banshee on its way into the third base. Only the Queen there. No detection at the moment. So this Banshee should be able to rack up a couple of kills. And this constant harassment is staple to tear and play against Zerg. And it's just delaying the Zerg player getting up too much stuff. The Overseer is on its way through, unfortunately, without speed. It is taking a while to catch up. The Hydra's trying to pick this off as best they can. The Banshee does fall. That was a nice little snipe off there by Vermoon, who's creep spread is still going absolutely brilliantly. I've got to say, I love Grey Creeps, but I think it's really beneficial. Now, what are these two SCVs doing? Are they just coming for a jolly trip on a little scout out? Are they going to do something more? We'll wait and see. Hive starting really early. So, this early Hive, with the 2-2 upgrades coming down with Roach Hydra, I'm interested to see what's going to come out. We've got the Enduring Locust upgrade coming for Swarm Host now as well, so we're clearly going to start using some of the later game units. And this early Hive could be for Ultralisks, Alternatively, it could be for Vipers, and Vipers are really strong when you're getting Swarm Hosts because it negates the effect of Siege Tanks, which can pick off the Locust very well. The other way to negate the effects of Siege Tanks, if you're going Swarm Hosts, is to make sure you get a good spread on your Swarm Hosts so the Locusts are more spread out and therefore don't take as much splash. Now, 
in terms of what the Terran's doing, we've got a Raven in production, we've also got Blue Flame on its way out, we've got a good number of Hellbats, which are of course stronger, um, slower versions of Hellions, but they also deal more damage per hit. And of course this Banshee's still being irritating, getting a couple of kills up, there is the Hydra's coming down, but without Overseer, quite in range yet, it should be able to sneak its way away, and we'll see pretty much everything going down. Can see the infestation pit upgrading something, and still no swarm host yet for Famut. And Famut has actually been quite passive, to be fair. He hasn't really engaged his opponent. He's just been macroing, macroing, macroing. If we look at the Lost Cap, though, it's pretty similar. The work accounts are very similar indeed, which is a small problem for Famut, but his army is looking good. He's now getting up 13 swarm hosts. Of course, the only problem with swarm hosts is if they're not in mass. Well, how do you negate that problem? Is you get them on mass, and then you just go and Burrow up somewhere and you laugh as the locusts keep swarming your opponent. So, single, he's got a good tank line here. He's securing up his fourth base. From a double expanding though, he's got his fourth and fifth on the way. His fourth just in production. Just finished production now, so getting up those additional gas. The swarm hosts about to pop out. Here they all come, and my goodness, this is a lot of swarm hosts. They do have the 2-2 two -two upgrades as well, which makes them very effective. So from it, nearly, nearly maxed out, can start looking to go and start containing his opponent, which is definitely a good thing to do. This creep spread is really impressive, actually. I'm loving seeing this spread its way across the map, and it's a good thing to do because... To be honest, it gives you vision, it gives your units better speed, and this sort of composition is going to benefit from the creep, because you can just start really poking and prodding around. The one thing that would be great to see is maybe a spore, or a spore and spine at each base, just to make sure you're a little bit safer from drop on harassment play, because there is a lot of dead space around the main base. But as we're seeing, this gas is taking a bit of damage, it's going to be annoying, the Banshee should get a kill or two, and with the Overseer morphing, the Queen will hopefully be able to pick it off, but... Okay, it's just one of those things which is a little frustrating, getting constantly harassed by Banshee. But 3-3 three, three upgrades coming down. Macro-wise, we've got a good number of Swarm Hosts out now. 18 are on the field, they're burrowing up, and they're just waiting, making sure that if the Terran does push, you can clean it out. The Hydras have come back to pick off the, that single Banshee. And the tank's starting now to try and move forward, so it's a big mech army for the moment that Famut has got to deal with. More factories in production, more command centers in production, and it is a maxed out Terran mech army. So your concern is always going to be engaging it head-on, but a good rally on these swarm hosts will allow Famut to engage it well. Looking up here, we do have the road to try and push in towards the third base. That's coming around the side. Of course, we do have a tank still seated up. That is going to be helpful. In come the Locusts, trying to engage as best they can. Is the rally point set? Now it is, so in come all the Locusts. But there is the siege up. The scan goes down on the Swarm Hosts. And the important thing is that these Locusts don't get taken down too quickly. An awful lot of Hellbats. The Roaches have managed to make it into third base. They're killing off a good number of SCVs. This is really quite difficult for both players because it's a siege line against the Swarm Host line. And that is never too fun to try and engage for either player. And out come the Vipers now. I'm super happy once you start seeing Vipers because the Vipers can come in and use blinding cloud on the siege tanks, allowing the Locusts to get into range. These Roaches are still picking away at everything. We do have the Hellions coming down towards this fifth base, but luckily there are no drones there at the moment, so it's going to be fine. The siege tanks are still going forward though, and of course they will be able to clean out the Locusts before they actually manage to get into range. Unfortunately, some of these siege tanks are out of sync. Basically all that means is that you're producing a couple of locusts at a time rather than them all in one big group. But these vipers consuming the evolution chambers to gain more energy quicker. So they are going to be coming into the place soon. This hatchery is going to get taken down by Hellions, which is not something you often see. These Hellions are so weak against buildings. But in come these vipers now. Are they going to go for ducks? They should, they should go for blinding clouds. There we go. They're already starting to hit. And of course now the locusts coming out with the tanks only able to engage in melee range. Suddenly, these locusts are looking a lot better. The blinding cloud going down on literally everything, and this is really good play. We're seeing all the tanks being forced to move back. A couple of tanks going down. The Viper is now going to have to go back and consume more energy. But single, he's in a position now where, hang on, my opponent knows how to deal with this. He's cleaned out a lot of my stuff. I'm really going to start having to think about how I engage. Move forward. If you care for those hikes, though, not to let them go down. Scans are going off, trying to pick off a couple of the swarm hosts, but still the Viper count increasing ever more. The Viper count is actually now up to six of them, eight of the swarm hosts as well. Not much aggression coming from either player at the moment. They're all just sitting in the middle. And there's the pullback. There's the abduct, allowing the Hydras to engage very effectively, knocking out a few more tanks without taking damage. So this is good play. We do have, unfortunately, a Banshee coming in, but there's the Overseer. Speed is now done for them. More scans coming on. Just trying to keep vision of all these locusts coming in. And of course, 
as the tank numbers decrease, the locusts are able to come forward a little bit closer, getting a couple of shots off here and there, and that's what you really need. A few Hellions are coming in towards this top base, but luckily there are spine crawlers there, ready to defend it all. And the Hellions managed to slip around the back, unfortunately, so we'll get a few drone kills there. More reinforcements coming across. These locusts are forever just charging into there, but of course, they're free units, so why not? In terms of the resources lost, very equal between these two players. The Hellions still being very frustrating. The move has got most of his tension down here, though, at the moment. The tank's moving forward, and that is a dangerous position to be in. A duck going down, trying to bring them back into the Hydras, but the Hydras are not too close, but of course the Locusts are there, allowing a lot of this to get cleaned out. So that was a good engagement in my opinion for the Rift, causing Singles to lose quite a lot more than that of his opponent, bringing more of these tanks forward, using Gliding Cloud, just trying to stop them from being able to engage, and of course as the tanks do get knocked out by the Locusts alone, it is very cost effective indeed. More evolution chambers being built for the Vipers to consume for energy, so this is great play at the moment. Meanwhile, more tanks coming in from behind, so this is really what I can see this metagame of TVZ transitioning into is just swarm host v tank lines and the vipers are being used very effectively being pulled in allowing these swarm hosts as they spawn uh, as they load the swarm to start picking off the tanks and of course the Hellions trying to come in but they have great use of grinding cloud there and single is really starting to struggle but it has taken the supply lead base wise he is one base behind if I'm not mistaken so it's four bases against five so that isn't ideal, and of course, slightly behind the work of health, but all while he's engaging cost effectively, you can afford to be behind in terms of the work supply. That isn't a big problem because more locusts coming down. The tank count is getting resupplied slowly. We should, we may see some more ducks. We may see, of course, some blinding cows go down. The vipers do use a lot of energy for all of their abilities, so gotta be careful with them. Gotta use them as best you can. And of course, this bottom base getting rechecked yet again, but in come the vipers, abducting quite a lot of these tanks forward straight into the locusts. Just look at the damage locusts do when they are at 3-3 upgrades. They're trying their best to pick up these tanks, and as free units, any unit you kill off with locusts alone, is always going to be good. Of course, Blinding Cloud there, just fading off, was helping these small posts. But single, he's expanding everywhere he can, and this has really been a long-term battle. This top base needs to get some more drones on it, ideally. We do have some drones not mining down at the bottom, but as we can see up here, though, we've got a lot of oversaturation at pretty much all of single's bases as well. In come the Vipers now. They are just going for mass blinding cloud everywhere, allowing these locusts to get into range, allowing these locusts to clean out so many tanks. Unfortunately, a handful of tanks at the back are still able to engage with them. Vipers going back yet again to drain more energy. And, well, the consume energy is really allowing these Vipers to pretty much endlessly. Swarm host still coming in. They should get another tank kill here, which is always good. But more tank resupply. Some Hellions getting taken down here. And we can just see that even though this is a constant, long, aggressive battle, that actually Fomut is keeping the engagement very much in his face. Nearly a double the cost effectiveness of his opponent. So that's one way you can keep going with Locus. They are 3 3 against 3 3 tanks as well. Another tank now does fall. And every time you pick something off for nothing, you're going to be fairly happy. So, in we go. Are we going to see another push in? We'll wait and see. Is, are the Vipers going to go? Here they go. They are abducting back the tanks, allowing those locusts to try and go. But look at this mass raven coming in. Look at all the Seeker missiles. The Vipers are luckily getting out of range, though in time they take a longer time to charge, of course, Seeker missiles now. So that means you do have to be a little more careful with them. Single is expanding everywhere, though. He is taking pretty much every bait base. From taking this top base here as well now. Of course, Locust coming back in again. Point defense drones are being used, but with Locusts and just so many of them and so many projectiles, they of course do not last very long at all. And the tank's trying to creep forward, trying to be a little bit braver, but it's all, all very tense indeed. The mass spore cooler being used to combat the Ravens. Another tank about to go down here. And of course, every time as I keep saying, every time you pick off units with this, you're going to be fairly happy. The spore pool is and the abduct from the Ravens picking off those air units. So this is really good. Those so picking off Vikings that way was very novel and very cool. Still, though, the aggression coming, transfusing on hatcheries to allow the Vipers to keep consuming them. That is pretty cool. Hellbats are morphing, trying to soak up a bit more of this damage. But as we can see, the Vipers are still here. Are they going to go for some more abducts? They've got to be careful for the Seeker missiles, but they should be able to get out of range in time. So there we go. That is fine. A couple more locusts, though. Of course, these Ravens are starting to get pretty low on energy. Are we going to see any blinding clouds? Are we going to see any abducts? Not yet we're not, but we are going to see these locusts pick off yet more Hellions. And just look at this. Over... over 10,000 
more resources dropped to single compared to Pamut. So even though he's mining a lot more and he's got basically a lot higher income, Pamut is just able to engage for such a long period of time. Meanwhile though, this command center is going to try and land on top of a hatchery, that's not going to be too effective. But we do see Ravens getting abducted back in order to get picked up by those four callers. So this is really novel play actually, I really like this sort of play where people are just experimenting with new things. Meanwhile, Pamuk is starting to run out of res- well he's actually not, he's not running out of resources at all because he's not losing any resources. So this is a pretty unusual style in terms of workers killed, not that many on either side and finally this tank count is starting to get worn down and with the tank count getting lower it starts running into problems because as we're seeing the locusts are now overpowering the tanks quite massively, we're seeing so many tanks get taken out and this is finally broken for Pamuk's swarm host have won and not only have they won but look at that difference in resources lost swarm hosts are so cost effective if used effectively and as we can see now Famut can start moving across he's getting up his ultimus cavern so even if all of these swarm hosts were to die which is unlikely considering how they are positioned now then you're gonna have good times and Yes, a lot of secret missiles are going off, and we can see a lot of Swarmos die there, unfortunately. But still, there's a good number remaining, 15 more there. We do have the Ravens as the threat, but not too much has gone down. 15 more Swarm hosts being built because Pamut has got a massive back. Running a bit low on minerals is the only problem, though. And that's one thing he does need to try and avoid. More tanks are here, but Pamut is taking back the map very effectively. He's also picking off that orbital command, which decided to fly over everything. The Viper count, really high up at 13 so abduct is always going to be a threat the seeker missiles are unfortunately also always going to be a threat so that's something that Famut does have to be careful of and i'm just taking a look around the vikings still having a good look more locusts coming across now and unfortunately all of those locusts are going to go down but a quick abduct on those tanks may not have been the best move just because if a, if a single or the hydrogen tank go in now but i was going to say if a scan went down obviously that tank could engage we do have seeker missiles trying to engage on those swarm hosts and apparently even if they burrow and there's not detection oh no there is detection from the range what am I on about um, I just didn't think they were in range still but as we can see the swarm hosts now getting cleaned out by a banshee that's their one weakness but 11 corruptions now in production behind this the tanks are moving forward the locusts though have just spawned and that move the tank was a bit risky because you see now a lot of tanks go down to the remaining locusts the, sea the swarm hosts trying to pull back the ravens now taking damage from corruptors but a good number of vikings there this game is getting very funky very quickly and i think purely because of just how many bases singles got he should be able to take this because while Famun has got a huge amount of gas he's not got that much minerals and as a result he may have trouble resupplying shortly he is starting to fall behind in terms of the work in terms of the supply count work account wise singles still has a huge number of SCVs of course the move mined out in his main base completely and at his natural so that is causing a lot of problems for his income we can see here the gas income is way higher for single and so is the mineral income and that is the big problem for Kamut at the moment although he is now mining out of this base should really take this one if he could but as we're seeing a single pushing forward Kamut has got to be very careful he's got a lot of spore coolers here he's also pushing forward with those locusts but as we can see a good tank line they're all very clumped up which would mean that if a nice little mining cloud went down, it could be very strong. And Abduct hitting on those Vikings into the spore quarters, allowing them to get taken down for free as well. Single now getting some Widow Mines out. We've got consumers going down on those Evolution Chambers, trying to get up more energy on the Vikings. But what the Vikings really need to do is get a blinding cloud down on those siege tanks. If they're able to get a blinding cloud on there, and it would only take a few when they're so clumped, obviously the Locusts could get in range, and it would be very, very, very effective indeed. So, where does this leave us? They are very similar in surprise. The Viking account is getting lower, the Corrupt account is getting higher. We've got a duck coming on fire of these Ravens, allowing the Corruptors to try and deal with them. But of course, Seeker missiles are now going down. I don't think those Corruptors are going to be able to get out of range in time. And unfortunately, Seeker missiles do manage to hit, but only getting one Corruptor. A good split from Famut there. Of course, the Fusion Core now coming down behind us. When was the last time we saw a Fusion Core in the game? And the answer, of course, is too long ago. Blinding Cloud now hitting, though. And as you can see, suddenly these tanks are becoming completely ineffective against Locust. We do have some Widow Mines on the field, though. So they should be able to help. But as we're seeing, just a few Locusts able to clean out an awful lot of tanks. And this is the problem. And the story of the game is that Single is using so many more resources than that of his opponent. What the move needs to do is get another good Blinding Cloud and then he'll be in an ace spot. And I've got to say, singles micro, uh, macro rather, hasn't been as good as it could have been because he sees so much money here and he's not maxed out. And that's always something you want to try and be doing is resupplying 
all the time. And that's what's allowing him to slowly come back into this. He just keeps pushing forward. The Widow Mines engaging well there. And something happening under that. Basically just all the Locusts dying. But Famut is now taking this bottom base, so that's good news for him. It's going to mean that he can start keeping his money coming in. He's got, of course, the plus two air upgrades on the way down. He's got the double spire, so he's now starting three two air upgrades. The Viper's moving forward. They aren't going to go for an abduct quite yet, of course. With so many Corruptors, you can just try and abduct these Ravens into it and just do some good damage, of course. An attempt at a Seeker missile, but way too far back, so isn't going to work. Six battle cruisers are now in production, though, but not a good choice when Famut just has so many Corruptors out, which you're hoping should and definitely does know about to see them. And with so many corruptors, battle cruisers are not the best choice in my opinion. But a lot of widow mines in with the battle cruisers could help because then obviously they'll do huge splash damage there. In come the vipers, they do get the blinding cloud down on top of those tanks, and so the tanks now just start dying very quickly to those locusts. They are all going down incredibly fast. And of course, only three tanks are now remaining. Still, those locusts being so cost effective for the Zerg player in this situation. The next wave on its way through, and won't even need a blinding cloud. Can throw one down just to help, and is going to do so. Those tanks are going to do no damage now to these swarm hosts and. Or to the Locust rather, and the Swarmhost will clear out the tanks yet again. Now, in terms of the vision for Famut, he knows about all the bases, so just needs to try and take them down as quickly as he can, and that will allow him to come back in economically, but he's got such a sizable force, and even with the battle cruisers coming out, I don't think it's going to be too much help, mainly due to the fact that there are a grand total of 25 Corruptors out, and Corruptors with the 3-2 upgrades are going to be very strong against these battle cruisers. The Ravens are there, so obviously the threat is gonna be, without doubt, the Seeker missile, but in they come. It's mass air terror now against an awful lot of air for the Zerg player as well. Needs to be careful if the Seeker missiles start hitting. Needs to engage quite quickly. The Seeker missile's not going off yet. Pulling back, getting a couple of Ravens. Luckily gonna get out of range in time, so that is good news, and that's the sort of pullback push forward you need to be going for. Those Widow Mines are engaging on the Locust, which does hold them back. Some good abducts going down, allowing this to try and get engaged as cost effectively as possible. Of course, though, with the point defense drones, these corruptors are reduced in how effective they can be. Seeker missiles not going down yet, and this is just a mass of units everywhere. The, the battle cruisers are going down, and Famuk is looking to destroy this force at long last, picking off the point defense drones now as well. All of the battle cruisers were picked off there, and the Ravens are unfortunately flying into a line of spore coolers. That is not something you want. And as we can see, a lift going down there. I'm surprised the corruptors haven't been used to knock that out, but instead, Famut just going to keep pushing forward. He's got more corruptors, more swarm hosts on their way down. Plus three, three for melee attack and air attack are on their way as well, about to get into action. So once they hit, we're definitely going to be seeing single running into some problems. The air upgrades favoring Famut by a long way. In come more battle cruisers though. Where are the corruptors? They've got to engage the best they can. I do hear some seeker missiles, so you've got to start thinking about pulling those corruptors back because otherwise, huge amounts of damage are going to get done. So many corruptors getting down to red health on the lock, getting killed there, but still the corruptor numbers are so high. And as we can see, the battle cruisers taken out yet again, and Famut is just relentlessly starting to push forward. Now his income is looking really good. He's got so much more resources. And um, yeah, as you can see, seeker missiles apparently, according to single are bad. So for Mu won that game, and you know what won in that game in my opinion? His macro. He did such a better job of staying maxed out the entire game. He was so much more cost effective as well, like nearly double, and that is a big figure. So single, he was on low, low supply for a long period of those games and just left his tanks to get destroyed. But I hope you did all enjoy that cast. Make sure you like the video, make sure you leave a cool comment, and make sure you subscribe, and thank you for Mu for sending me that game. Tune back tomorrow everyone for another new game. Bye for now.